Now I'm gonna knock out one other fly from my to-do list, and I think y'all are gonna like this one. Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. So today's pattern comes from Chad Croson of Kentucky. He sent this to me several months ago. Now Chad also sent me a big bag of materials too. We got some alpaca wool, some guinea feathers, and some turkey flats, and a little bit of synthetics. So I hope to work that into a giveaway here in the next few weeks. So today's pattern, Chad calls this his crow fly. Now there's another Smoky Mountain pattern called the crow fly, so we're gonna call this one Chad's crow fly. Now it's a sunken fly, but is it a wet fly or is it a nymph? Well, I think you could tie it either way. If I was gonna tie it in the wet fly sizes, I'd make it toward the bigger end, maybe an eight or a 10, uh, 12 maybe. But as a nymph, I think I'd tie it 14s, maybe a 16. Now, not only does this fly use one of my favorite materials, peacock hurl, wrapped as a body, but it also uses peacock sword fibers for some cheeks. Now, the version Chad sent me, I think it had black hackle fibers for a wing. So if you're thinking of this as a wet fly or maybe a small streamer, there's all kinds of substitutions you could use for the wing. You could use uh, probably bucktail or calf tail. I want to use a black squirrel tail, and I think it looks pretty cool on it. So it's a pretty fun pattern. Let Chad know what you think about his fly in the comments. And oh yeah, for you regular commenters, if you're watching this on the Saturday, the day that I publish it, I might be a little slow in responding to the comments. I'm going to be out of town up in New York City this weekend, but I'll get to it as soon as I get back in town. So that's it, everybody. I think y'all are going to like Chad's crow fly. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise, Chad's crow fly. Now we've got some options here. I'm thinking for sizes, if you're going to tie this as a wet fly, I'd keep it kind of big, maybe eight, tens, or twelves. But if you're going to tie it as a nymph, I'd go a little bit smaller, you know, 14 or 16. So I'm going to go with a 10, pinch the barb right there. So this is a size 10 wet fly hook and 1x long. Black thread, I'll lay a base down to the start of the bend. Now for the tail, we're going to use some crystal flash. And Chad had a really dark, it was kind of a, almost a black. This is the darkest stuff I have right here is a black and silver. I think that's going to work just fine. So what I'm going to do, I'll take two strands, just fold it over on itself right here, and then we'll catch it in. We'll trim that front off in just a second. But two or three wraps to get this caught in right on top. Now snip the front, and don't worry if it's perfect, we're going to bury that shortly. I'm going to go ahead and snip the tail, make it about a little bit longer than a hook gap. I think that right there is going to work. Now we do have a rib. I'm going to use size 14 Mylar tinsel right here. And remember, the side you want to be showing, catch that in with that side toward the hook. So I want silver side up, I'm going to catch it with the silver side facing the hook. So just bury this in right along the top. Now let's catch in the body. Peacock hurl body, and I'm gonna grab a bunch of them. This is six or seven strands right here. Let's go ahead and snip off the front part of the brittle ends right there and catch this in. So my tip here, take as many as you think you need and if after you've tied one, it's too many, then use a few less next time. Or if you, you want a thicker body than you ended up with, use a few more. It's not rocket science. We're just fly tires here. So go ahead and take your thread back up. What I'm gonna do with this, I am gonna use my spring-loaded hackle pliers and just try to fit all these in here. And then I'm gonna spin it as a little bit of a rope here. Not real tight but five or six good turns. If you spun it real tight, you might break a couple of these. And if you weren't gonna rib this, I would probably put, um, leave a, a thread tag that you could, you know, reinforce with this and, and spin it around with the rope. But since we are gonna rib it, I don't think we need to do that. Let's just go ahead and wrap these hurl all the way up to the front. Okay, when you have a long enough body, let's go ahead and catch this off. I'm gonna catch it in with two wraps, and I am going to snip this. If it was just 
two strands of hurl, you could probably just break them, but trying to yank six of them, you probably make a little bit of a mess. So a few extra wraps right here, just to make sure we got that locked in. Now let's counter wrap this rib. And on this one, size 10, I think four wraps is gonna work, but you know, your preference. How flashy do you want this thing? How much silver do you want to see? I think four will be fine in this case. Okay, that's two wraps to catch this in. Now, remember, this is a mylar tinsel, so it's not metallic like the, the old style flies. But I will fold it back over on itself and put a couple extra wraps. It'll still cut your thread if you're not careful, even though it's mylar instead of metal. So just be careful when you catch that off right there. Now the wing on this thing, I think we have some options here as well. Chad uses a black and it looked like just a, a bunch of hackle fibers. So I think you could use a hackle uh, and wrap it as a collar and then post it up top. Or you could use a calf tail or maybe if you had some fine buck tail, use that. I'm gonna use squirrel. This is a black squirrel tail. I'm gonna take a piece about like that because it's not real thick, but I will put it in my stacker. Let's see how well this stacked right here. Okay, um, maybe maybe it stacked well enough. We'll see. I think that's gonna be fine. But before I catch it in, I'm gonna put some wax on my thread because this squirrel tail is a bit slippery. And the length of it, I'd say to the bend of the hook. So let's go ahead and catch this in right here. Now those first couple of wraps were not tight, they were just medium, but I did put a tight wrap going back and these wraps right here are kind of tight. I don't want it to spin around the hook on me like it just did. So let's see if we can fix that. Take it right back to the, the top. Remember this squirrel tail is slippery, so I'm gonna have to do a, a loose wrap right there. And what I'm gonna do while I have this in my fingers, I'm gonna put a wrap right up under it. That will sometimes help keep it from slipping on you. Okay, so that wing, that's coming off the top. That's all right looking, I like that just fine. But I am crowding my eye a little bit. Let's see if we can get in here and snip this off without mangling up this wing too much. Okay, I think we'll be able to live with that. I might just have to cram these up in here a little bit. And you know what, let's take a couple more snips just to see if we can shorten that a tiny bit more. Okay, now the next component, I guess these are called cheeks. Um, and it's peacock sword fibers, not hurl, but it's sword fibers. These things right here, much more metallic and a little bit brittler, a little bit more brittle, I guess. So just take three or four of these sword fibers right here, and we're going to catch them in on each side as a cheek, maybe halfway the length of the, the wing. So just a medium wrap right here and we'll position it if we need to. Okay, I think that is gonna be fine right there and we'll flip it over and do one on this side. Okay, now take a look at the lengths. Those are about the same. They're coming off both sides. Let's go ahead and snip this excess up front here. Okay, I like those just fine. That's about the right length. My head is just a little bit crowded up here. Let's see if we can fix that. Take our thread right back behind the eye and then we'll ramp it up. Hopefully it's not gonna end up being too big on us, but yeah, we'll see. Okay, I think we're gonna be able to fish with this guy. Let's go ahead and put a whip finish on it and then see if we have any cleanup.
I think we're gonna be fine with this guy, just a drop of head cement to harden up that head right there, and then we got a fishable fly. So there you go, Chad's crow fly. Pretty cool looking pattern. I appreciate you sending it to me, Chad, and I appreciate y'all watching. So take care, and we'll see you next time.